My name is Paul Graziano. I'm the uh, Commissioner of Housing and the Executive Director of the Housing Authority of Baltimore City. Today we are in a Housing Authority setting here at Gilmore Homes. I'm very, very pleased to be here with a very full house. Um, you may wonder why we're jammed in this room. Well, the downstairs is fully occupied with all kinds of wonderful activity with the uh, Boys and Girls Club. So that's a good thing, right, Madam Mayor? And so we're up here, but we're here to today to uh, celebrate another uh, advancement, another um, major milestone in the progress of, uh, of moving uh, Gilmore Homes forward from a, t from a dark time to a very uh, positive t future. And uh, there'll be a number of folks um, uh, you'll be hearing from today uh, in regards to uh, today's event. Uh, but I want to I introduce a few people and acknowledge a few people, and I'm going to introduce the mayor who will, uh, will kick it off here. Um, let me see. I've got a number of folks, and some of the folks up here I'll introduce as they come up to speak. But I, I want to, um, where is Cheryl Worthington? Okay, Cheryl uh, is in charge of our resident services, and I want to thank her for all the hard work throughout the city, but especially here at Gilmore, the advances have been made in the last uh, year plus are, are just are incredible and heartwarming and heartening. So I want to thank you for that, uh, that effort and your whole team. Uh, I know uh, it deserves a round of applause for the President's services. Uh, Nick, I don't know if Nick Collet, Nick, is Nick here? Yeah, Nick here is our Chief Operating Officer. I know he and his team are just working hard every day and all the developments, they've made tremendous progress here and throughout the city, um, Madam Mayor, addressing uh, uh, maintenance issues. We've eliminated all the backlogs, and we're we're timely on all that. And so um, uh, they're, they're they're being very uh, vigilant about keeping up with that. Uh, my chief of staff as well, Kim Washington, is out there somewhere. Yeah, uh, right somewhere. I heard her. I know she talked to me a minute ago. Uh, uh, and Vernell Gibson, the asset manager of the site, in the back there. Thank you. Uh, you're doing a great job here. Uh, we've got a number of folks from the uh, service uh, coordinators area, um, and uh, is uh, Rick Landry here? Is he downstairs working away with the kids? Oh, there he is. Uh, that, uh, Madam Mayor, you may remember this is the superstar who moved. Uh, where is where is Ella? And uh, and uh, well, he was over at O'Donnell. And Michelle, is, I don't know if Michelle's here, but every time I mention his name, she starts sobbing because <laughs> their loss was Gilmore's game and gain and. Um, but it's great to have him in, in the program wherever he is, and it's especially important that he's here. Um, speaking of the Resident Advisory Board, I mentioned Ms. Ella Broadway, the president, and, and, and her entire executive group is here. Um, I, um, uh, Monica, Monica here, Monica Watkins, uh, it's uh, worked very hard. Um, uh, Mayor, you may recall when we um, did, the, uh, did a ribbon cutting here to open up this facility. Um, uh, and we started with the Girls and Boys Club, but now we've got uh, this activity. Uh, let me see, and Anita Chavis I see there, with, who keeps track of the money so we can get this stuff done. Um, I want to thank Tony White, I don't know if he's here from your office, has worked so closely with us, around, there he is, uh, around the neighborhood and in this, in this development to uh, 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 get everybody around the same table to talk about uh, progress. Uh, uh, Leon Pinkett from your Team. I just walked in with him. I know he's out there somewhere. And uh, let me see. Um, uh, Reverend Jamal Bryant is here. Um, and uh, Bilal Ali, representing the state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby. Um, and then I have a number of our board members. Chairman Smith, Joseph Smith, uh, Boyer Freeman from the board as well. I know we'll have others later because we have a board meeting coming in a bit. Um, so. Those are some of the folks who have um, certainly um, have been working hard every day to improve conditions here and throughout the, the um, housing authority operation. So um, there's a really important um, announcement to be made today, and I'm not going to say what it is. I'm going to ask the mayor to actually do the official announcement here. And so without further ado, I'm going to um, um, invite um, Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake to um, to make this announcement and talk about what it means as part of the larger program, and then we'll hear from some of the other panelists. Oh. Thank you very much. 
uh, Commissioner Graziano. Good afternoon, everyone. I know it, we're in here very crowded today, but I think it's a good thing when you think about why, uh, that we have a community that is active and engaged and there's always something going on. And I love uh, having a chance to talk about even more of the positive things that are going on in our city. Gilmore Homes is one of the most economically challenged development developments in the inventory of HABC and the development and its surrounding blocks were the epicenter of the unrest in April of last year. Part of, Sandtown, what's part of the Sandtown Winchester Harlem Park neighborhood, 28.8% uh, of the population has less than a high school diploma. The surrounding communities are plagued by high unemployment, high poverty rates, high school dropout rates, high teenage pregnancy, uh, crime, as well as a lack of quality affordable housing. I do want to uh, say thank you and congratulate the HABC staff, the board, and um, the executive director, Paul Graziano, for receiving uh, this major, major award uh, today. And I'm very proud uh, to be with you to announce this $2.5 million award from HUD that will help Gilmore Homes residents find and keep higher paying jobs. We're going to do. I'm pleased that we're going to have a chance to discuss the impact of the new Gilmore Works Jobs Plus program uh, and what it will mean for Gilmore uh, Homes residents and the residents of the greater uh, Sandtown Winchester community. The Jobs Plus initiative is a proven model that helps public housing residents find and keep higher paying jobs by connecting them with employment opportunities, educational advancement, and financial literacy services. Now, so the, the thing that I am so grateful for is that time after time, we learn from what's worked, we've learned from what hasn't worked, and we build a better system. And I think Jobs Plus is an example of that. It, is, it capitalizes on a successful demonstration program that combines traditional employment, training, job placement services, as well as uh, rent incentive and place-based investment in building community support for work. The Gilmore Works Jobs Plus program will target services to the specific needs of the residents that will result in long-term sustainable employment. Again, understanding that you need to get people not just to the door, we need to get them through the door, and then we need to figure out how we can make sure that they can stay in the job. So creative retention met methods, such as the Gilmore Jobs uh, Club, will offer opportunities for residents to discuss their experiences from a peer-to-peer -peer uh, perspective, and we know that model works. Uh, we know when you have a chance to, to uh, communicate and to exchange for, with your peers, people that are going through the same thing that you're going through, and also people that are modeling you're modeling for each other the types of behaviors and practices that can help you to achieve your goals. That's what works. So the purpose of the Jobs Plus program is to develop locally based job driven approaches to increase earnings and advance employment outcomes through work readiness, employer linkages, job placement, educational advancement, technology skills, and financial literacy for residents of public housing. The program model includes a partnership with the Mayor's Office of Employment Development and a host of other internal and external partners to promote initiatives to improve economic and earning outcomes. This is a critical element for self-sufficiency for all families. Baltimore City's Health Department is also one of the 20 partners that will provide that provided uh, funding, $96,000, to match the Jobs Plus grant. And that will be used for parenting, uh, skills training as well as wellness training. Again, we know that it is, you know, this is a holistic approach to ensuring that we are uh, creating positive pathways uh, for people in this community to achieve the, the, um, the sustainable and sustaining jobs that they want for themselves and their family. So um, I'm very grateful uh, for all of the partnerships. I'm grateful for the continued investment from HUD. From HUD. Um, you know, I, I say all the time, two weeks doesn't go by without a member of the Obama administration being in Baltimore and being here uh, more times than not with a check 
showing their, uh, their investment and the president's investment in our community. So I'm extremely grateful, uh, Carol, for your ongoing partnership. Again, I want to thank all of you for being here. I, I want to thank Major Briscoe. I know who is here, and I know that uh, Council President Young uh, sent a representative as well. This is a great day. And I am looking forward to hearing the stories of those individuals whose lives have been changed by this program because we, we know it happens. I know, Jason, uh, you can tell you know, story after story of people who uh, have come through the doors of uh, our employment center and whose lives have been changed. And, and when I get a chance to meet uh, people, I was on a, a job, I was visiting a, a local business today uh, in South Baltimore and met a young man who uh, was working for this uh, company, a company that's been around since the 1890s. And the, this uh, company is determined to make sure that the people in the community where this business exists get the job. So they're focused on making sure that people get a second chance. And you know, I met this nice, this nice young man. Uh, and um, you know how you say you can never, never, never judge a book by its cover. I met him. He was uh, one of their star employees, and, and when uh, we walked away, she said that he had been incarcerated and didn't know uh, if he was going to be able to make a way for himself and his family once he got out. Uh, but what happens when you give someone a chance? and you give them the support that they need to take advantage of the, the chance. Now you've changed not just his life, but the, the lives of the generations that uh, will follow him. So this is a, a great day, not just for what it means today, but for what it will mean for the future of Baltimore's families. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think you, you know, thanks for turning on my mic, too. I mean. <laughs> uh, you know, this is so exciting, and I, I wanted to say praise the Lord, and I realized that I didn't, I forgot the invocation, so uh, <laughs> I hope I'm not struck down here somewhere, but Pastor Beryl Whipple uh, will give, well, a little bit out of order, will give the invocation, please, uh, but this is a, a, a blessed day, so please, uh, sir. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. We come on this day of thanksgiving, being grateful for this opportunity to grow. You know, Lord, where this community has come from. But more importantly, Lord God, you know where it's going. And so as we celebrate the advancement of this day, we can recall that Nehemiah 4, 6 says, the people had a mind to work. So we thank you for the opportunity to work. We thank you for quality jobs. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to work and support our families. We thank you for respectable positions. And we thank you for breaking the curse of poverty. Now God, continue to bless this press conference and this announcement. Thank you, Father, for the support systems that are in place. And allow us, God, to be good stewards of what you have entrusted us with. And for this we say thank you. In thank Jesus' you. name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, and uh, I apologize again for getting o overly uh, rambunctious here and get it out of, get it out of order. So we're going to be back at the back here. Um, I uh, I know the president was not able to make it, but uh, uh, Mr. Phillips is here, I believe, from the president's office. So I want to acknowledge his presence and thank you for being here. Um, and from Delegate Barbara Robinson's office, I know Marcus Baker has a citation that he would like to read. Would you like to come up, Marcus? We can uh, turn this mic around. Oh, you can use that one, yeah. First of all, I want to say good afternoon to everyone. Hey, I'm, afternoon. I'm Marcus Baker, the legislative aide for Delegate Barbara A. Robinson of the 40th Legislative District. And she has entrusted me to come and represent her. She was unable to make it, and she asked me to bring the citation, and I'll read it really quickly and get out of your way. It says, the Maryland General Assembly, official citation, be it hereby known to all that sincere congratulations are offered to Gilmore Homes Community Center in recognition of being the recipient of the HUD Job Plus Award to be used to connect the residents of Gilmore Homes 
with employment opportunities, educational advancement, and financial literacy services. Presented on this, the 18th day of October, 2016, by Delegate Barbara A. Robinson of Baltimore City, Legislative District 40. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll make sure that this is prominently displayed. Appreciate that. Um, it's very nice. Um, okay. Um, well, and the mayor acknowledged uh, the um, support that we've received from the Obama administration. Um, I think throughout the city government, um, our particular corner is the uh, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and they've been tremendous partners to Baltimore Housing, uh, both from the Housing Authority side and from the HCD side, and a whole range of programs from public housing to vouchers to CDBG and so forth. Um, and so uh, very, very ably represented here today uh, as the field office director in the Baltimore uh, office um, is uh, Carol Payne, and she's been a partner on so many of these endeavors. And I think you were here about a week or so ago as you were all uh, working on the, uh, the Internet um, uh, Essentials program. And I think you and Nick were here announcing that. I was downtown. So uh, Carol, um, as part of our ongoing uh, partnership here. I'd love to hear from you and your thoughts about what this means. Good afternoon, everybody. Now you can hear me. This is truly exciting. Uh, I can hardly stop looking at Cheryl Worthington um, on the dance floor. Uh, a year ago, we were talking about this very grant. And I said to Cheryl, whatever you need, we will do it to help you. Uh, so please give Cheryl a round of applause. Uh, I do bring you greetings from Secretary Castro. This work is important to the Secretary as we talk about opportunity and HUD being the agency of opportunity. Uh, I feel like, for me, public housing is where I learn the art and science of housing. Uh, I've been at Gilmore Homes three times in the last three weeks. Um, it, yes. Uh, <laughs> And this is an exciting moment. Employment is critical to growing a community. You cannot have folks meet success without being gainfully employed and with mobility. So this 2.5 million makes it possible to expand the work that the Housing Authority is already doing. I want to also just highlight the fact that you have a stellar resident advisory board. Um, when we talk about how to make things better, they are very honest and open. Here's what we need. And so, Ms. Broadway, I hope we've delivered again uh, in terms of what the community can use to make sure that there is opportunity for everyone. Paul mentioned the concept place. And so we want to look at where we can make the greatest impact to help our gracious mayor to make this city better because everyone has opportunity. Uh, when I looked at your grant, you had many, many partners. One is sitting right next to me. Uh, and that makes it better because you cannot do it by yourself. I want you to know my commitment to you is if it means coming back to Gilmore Homes next week, I will be here when we merge the work on internet access and employment. It not only makes a difference for the adults in the community, but it makes a difference for the babies in the community. So my congratulations to you and my offer to be here with you every step of the way. Congratulations again to Gilmore Homes. You are the best. I would, I would certainly like to 
echo the uh, comments about the, the uh, stellar uh, resident advisory board that we have, and uh, I didn't mention before, but I like to every time I get an opportunity brag about the work that they've done through the years, but uh, what it was about a month ago, we were asked to go to New York City, Madam Mayor, and uh, to talk uh, about um, how um, a, resident, a resident advisory board can provide critical leadership in the implementation of a RAD program, the, the major redevelopment program that we have that's putting $350 million back into over 4,000 of our units. So Ms. Broadway and uh, Ms. Jones and uh, Mr. Craig, and there were others who I don't think were here today, Michelle and Mary uh, Layton uh, were there um, with us, and the folks in New York were just so impressed. The largest housing authority in the country uh, learned a lot from our resident leaders uh, in, in, um, in terms of how to implement such a program and how to uh, deal with its complexity and how to uh, work with the fellow residents and how to work with the developers and the board uh, and, the, and the staff. And so I want to commend them for, for their leadership there. We're very proud of the work they've done, but that's just another example. Um, uh, uh, Bill Tamburino, I want to thank. I don't think he was able to make it here today, but um, but he's the uh, the uh, director of public and Indian housing operations here in the Baltimore office. Such a terrific uh, supporter of thing, everything we do. And Carol, you're so fortunate to have uh, Bill in your office. I understand they're always trying to steal him in Washington to on special task force and committees and so forth. But I want to thank him. Uh, even though he's not here right now. Um, another person who I'm going to ask to come up here um, who's shown steadfast leadership um, is our chairman, uh, Joseph Smith, the chairman of the Housing Authority of Baltimore City. So, Joe, I know you're kind of jammed in there, but if you want to uh, get that mic and thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good dedicated hard work she has done over the years to bring programs into the city that benefit all the residents. And to the credit of Paul Graziano and his team for outstanding work on behalf of the Housing Authority residents. Those of you who attend our board meetings know that almost every meeting we raise the question of what are you doing for the residents beside providing brick and mortar. We've been on the staff for years to do more and more to provide additional meaningful programs and services to the residents. So you can imagine that I'm extremely excited about this program for many reasons. One, <coughs> it will provide what we all say we think will make our residents more productive and have a better life jobs. Jobs and education are two keys. Let me just say that from a personal experience. I grew up in the ghetto of Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, don't think that there weren't ghettos 100 years ago. <laughs> there were ghettos. But there, was one, there were a couple of things that we all were required to do. We used to call them chores when you were real small, like washing dishes and making up the day and cleaning the house and all that. As soon as you got old enough to have some kind of a job, you went to work. You went to work doing something. There was no sitting around, standing on street corners, no hiding. Everybody went to work and everybody went to school. And most people went to church. Now, you can take the third part or whatever you want, but those were three things we all were required. And they instilled in us work ethics, discipline, the desire to have meaningful goals and to keep striving to improve your life the way they used to say that they to improve your conditions. One of the keys to that was having opportunity to provide so that you could do these things. So this kind of program is very important in everybody. Secondly, partnering. I'm so delighted to see all the external partners that are part of this. Because you cannot do this uh, through any one agency or any one organization, but together we can achieve this. And 
the last minute, and he say something that all of you sort of like. But like is saying this. But it's interesting that I watched two debates, presidential debates. I would get to hear the word HUD used. So I'm not here to talk about who you vote for, but you notice that this program came from HUD. You need to make sure that somebody in the White House that will continue to be focused on these kind of programs. That means we all need to go out and vote our conscience, but realize that when you're voting, you are voting to help sustain and keep programs like this in place. Because if we don't keep these type programs in place, because I would like to see this in every development, every one of our properties, not just the Gilmore. I'd like to see a big car with every property that we manage and those that we don't manage, like the red properties now, have some kind of programs that would benefit the residents, give them real opportunities to have jobs, to have to get education, GED, <coughs> so that we can have a really working population in Baltimore City. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And you, you have truly been a champion for uh, the residents and for the programs to serve our residents beyond uh, a place where they can put their head on a pillow at night, and that's extremely important. Um, so uh, I think uh, Joe just mentioned um, how many, uh, all the different partners here, and uh, frankly, we wouldn't have these partners without the total support of the mayor. She brought in so many of these partners and, and, and uh, asked them to join the Housing Authority in this effort. And one of them, uh, who uh, is a direct report uh, to the mayor, uh, who heads up the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, is Jason Perkins Cohen. And I'm, I know that the Labor Department, speaking of the Obama administration, has provided a, a, a significant amount of support uh, for uh, in job training programs and so forth. Uh, and this one happens to be out of HUD, uh, but the, the, the experience, the expertise, and the, 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 the resources that you have as well, Jason, I think will uh, dovetail nicely with this particular grant. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Paul, uh, for the invitation to be part of this grant. Um, I just want to make three quick comments. But first, I, if I heard correctly, I think, Carol, you said that uh, you know, getting out on the dance floor somehow resulted in several million dollars coming to, to Baltimore, which means, you know, my Friday night, my Saturday night, uh, they are now booked. Um, I'll join you. All right, whatever we got to do. Uh, we were one of six in the nation, so we must have done a lot of dancing, right? <laughs> whatever you got to do. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we're obviously thrilled to be part of anything called the Jobs Plus a Grant, Jobs Plus Grant. But this grant has three factors that are particularly exciting. The first is it's place-based. Uh, and that means we're going to be here. Uh, we love our centers. We have a lot of good work in our centers. But we know that we have to be in the community providing services directly to community members. And we got to be better attached. And so this grant gives us an opportunity to do just that. Uh, and all the research shows that that is the best way to actually I mean, it's no surprise, I wonder you know, why we, someone paid a lot of money for this sort of uh, research. But being in the community of the community is how you do the best work. So we're excited to, to be here um, and provide direct services. Uh, the second point I would make, which is exciting, and Joe just talked about it, is the partnerships. So you know, there's nothing better for me than to be part of a grant or to be at a press conference, whether I'm up here in the audience, and to hear all of these different organizations that don't have jobs as their core function talking about jobs. Uh, because we all know how important that is. And we know that, again, you know, we do you know, good work, but it doesn't happen alone. It only happens if we're working with all of the different partnerships that, uh, that provide the services that, that everyone needs. Um, we know that the residents of Gilmore Homes and the residents across Baltimore want to work. Um, they're, they're ready to work hard, 
but we need to make sure that we're providing opportunities to work and we're creating pathways to work. And that can't happen by any one agency. It has to work with uh, education and child care and mental health and child support. And these are a few of the, uh, of the partners up here, but when we come forward, that's exactly what we'll be bringing uh, to the table and we're really excited about that. And most importantly, the key partner is working with you the residents themselves and the community association to make sure that we are truly meeting the services that you need. Uh, and the last is, um, you know, I talked about Jobs Plus and we're excited about it. I wish we could just change the wording a little bit and talk about Career Plus. Because what we know is um, jobs are great and jobs are a stepping stone and there's a lot of folks that can get a job uh, and that's good, but if it doesn't provide a family supporting wage, it's not good enough. And so we aren't really going to be focused, I mean, I'm just going to say it, we're actually not going to be focused on jobs. We're going to be focused on family supporting wage careers. Uh, and um, we really look forward to working with all of you uh, to make that happen. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, uh, Jason, and I, I think you're, um your uh, clarification there is an important one. Um, this is not about a job. This is not about a, 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 a part-time job or a job for a period of time or whatever. It is about a lifetime of, of uh, activity that will enable uh, everyone who participates to uh, f uh, uh, reach their full potential and support their families in the most positive way and to be a, 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 a total asset to their community. Um, and, and, and so forth. So I think that's a very, very important clarification. Um, in a minute, I'm going to ask uh, Linda Moyd, who's the uh, tenant council president, to speak. But I did want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Robin Carter, the vice chair of the Housing Authority um, uh, Board. Um, and uh, we'll be having a board meeting after this. So it's, uh, we're gonna get just, we got a little bit, a little bit of extra thing going on here. So um, uh, Linda um, has been a, a, a true leader, a true fighter um, for her community in good times and in bad. Um, she has been here. She's been steady. She's been steadfast. She's been vocal about um, change that needed to occur. And I hope, uh, Linda, that this is a real, real uh, concrete example of the kind of change that that needs to be brought to the Gilmore community. So we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Is any more, any more no. Gilmore leaders in the house? Please stand. Any more leaders? Please stand. Truly, we would also like to thank all of you who has made it possible for the career change that's happening in our community. I want to thank all the people, which I would say this is one of the best years. We're not going to talk about what used to go on. We're going to talk about what's going to go on. We want to see oh, that we are very, very thankful but most of all, we are grateful because we know that if God be for us, then who can be against us? Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linda, and again, for all your hard work over these many years. And as the skies get bluer going forward, it's all the more important that you're out there um, cheering on everybody here at, uh, at uh, Gilmore, so thank you. And I, I know I can, we can count on you. Appreciate it. Um, we have other partners um, from Baltimore City Community College, Director of Adult Basic Education Skills Alternative High School Diploma Options GED Program. That must be a very large business card. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, we'll just call it Director Michelle Jackson from Baltimore City Community College. So thank you for being here. Thanks for being a partner. Thank you. Sure. 
Um, good afternoon, everyone. This indeed is a great day. When I got the news, I got excited. I did a little jig, if you will, um, because I knew that a lot of hard work um, had gone into making this day possible. Um, working with Cheryl Worthington and her team um, with the grant, um, getting the necessary you know, information to her and partnering with AJBC, um, this is a great day. It's a great day. But on behalf of the President, CEO, Dr. Um, Gordon F. May, the Board of Trustees, and Vice President of Business and Continuing Education, I'm Gregory Mason of Baltimore City Community College, we congratulate Baltimore City Housing Authority on receiving the, plus, um, the Job Plus Grant Award. And again, I want to applaud the community for this effort. Baltimore City Community College Adult Basic Education Program is one of Maryland's leading um, institutional programs um, in terms of helping adults achieve functional literacy and become college and or career ready. Um, the program is more vital now than ever before and we continue to work together with our community partners in helping the greater Baltimore community. Baltimore City Community Outreach efforts support the college mission to provide um, quality, affordable, and accessible education opportunities with comprehensive programs that meet the professional and personal goals of students while improving the communities in the greater Baltimore area. Our partner, which is HABC, um, helped to carry that mission and vision of the college back into the community. They are our eyes, they're our ears, and they're our voice in the community. And um, as I was coming up on the elevator, um, the, it's the REV, I have to get all the acronyms together. Um, the council, before we were even considered being partners, we met with the council. The council gave their approval and nod, and then we went to work to become part of this great community. So I thank you for opening your arms and working with us, hearing, hearing what we had to say and what we had to offer um, the community. So thank you so much for your team. But you are our eyes and you are our ears and you are the voice in the community. You are our greatest asset. And so you help us identify those persons with those literacy challenges. And one of the things that I realized as director, if you have one or two strong partnerships in the community, um, it can make a difference. And so I'm pleased as well to be a part of this great team of partners to provide the services that, we, that we're providing currently. We established our partnership a year ago in September with HABC, and it has been a strong partnership over the last year. We provide academic assessments, um, basic education, instruction, and support services for the residents at five, currently five HABC sites. Eager Street, Pleasant View Gardens, Westport, O'Donnell Heights, Brooklyn Homes, and Elm Gilmore Homes. Baltimore City Community College is looking forward to providing an array of educational opportunities to help build the basic skills in reading, math, computer literacy, or to help persons acquire their high school diploma so the residents can transition into those training programs that have come into our city and for post-secondary education. We really are excited about being a partner in this venture. And again, we say congratulations and thank you, HABC, for making us a partner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, we've actually just been joined by Senator Pugh Perhaps uh, she would like to join us in the front row here. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, we've just made an announcement. Uh, the mayor just made an announcement of a uh, one of six grants in the entire nation uh, for the Jobs Plus program, two and a half million dollars that will be dedicated to uh, the efforts here at Gilmore Homes to provide jobs and, as Jason pointed out, careers uh, for people here. So. We're just having a bit of a celebration here about the fact that we were one of six in the entire nation, and uh, <clears throat> so that's <laughs> that's what we've just announced. Um, yes, go ahead, yeah, right there. Especially when we have those uh, the Gilmore Homes residents, I am really excited because many of us over here have endured for 
many years and we've been doing some work and not enough, but it's not just about jobs, it is about careers. And with 76,000 people unemployed in our city, we want to get folks working and will. And this contributes to that. So thank you. And let's just make sure we get the folks that are here. And I know that this is what this is all about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator, um, and we look forward to your uh, support of this effort over the next several years. It's a, and I should indicate that there's been a lot of uh, parallel uh, efforts and other money put into this. The, the Mayor's Office of Employment Development will be very actively involved. Uh, Baltimore City Community College and a long list of other actors are there as well. So that two and a half million dollars is really doubled when you add in also the money we put into renovating this facility and so forth. Um, so we're very excited. Uh, and with that, um, I'm going to ask um, uh, Dana, uh, is it Cow Cohen? Cowan, Cowan, Dana Cowan, who's a resident who actually can speak from experience because she actually successfully completed an earlier Jobs Plus program and she did li live here in Baltimore, in Gilmore Homes. Do you still live here? Okay, so, uh, but was here at the time and, uh, and uh, works for our voucher program uh, at this point. So um, let's give a hand to Dana for her. Yeah. Was it? Dana, you are you are a uh, model for um, all of those who will follow, and I hope everybody listened closely because hers is a a, two, a true career path, not not just a job, but a career, and uh, that has made so much difference, I'm sure, to all aspects of your life and and your family. So thank you for being here and sharing your story with us. Now, with that, I think we're going to conclude. Uh, uh, the uh, this event uh, we were going to do a tour of the facility I don't know we got a lot of people here to try to uh, will <laughs> anybody who's interested in taking a walk around we we reopened uh, this center um, what was it in uh, June or something June I think and we put I think about a million and a half dollars in here and uh, it had been sitting here vacant for uh, quite a while we cobbled together some money some of our money some state money and so forth and so we have a wonderful program downstairs with the, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, and uh, we have now the Jobs Plus program for upstairs. So we've got a full house of activity here. This is a, an example of uh, a beacon of hope here. Um, just you stop on the first floor, the second floor, the third floor. There's all kinds of great stuff going on here. So anybody who wants to take a tour, 
we're going to try to get you around the building. It's just a little crowded in here. Uh, we are going to then uh, move, I think we're going to move right into our board meeting of the Housing Authority. It is the regularly scheduled Housing Authority board meeting. We often try to get out to sites uh, throughout the city, not just meeting downtown. So this is one of our site visits, and of course it is embellished with this wonderful, wonderful announcement today. So thanks to everyone who was here. Thanks to the mayor for being here, uh, and uh, for uh, uh, Senator Pugh, thank you for making a special appearance. Uh, and again, we look forward to uh, working with you throughout this program over the years. So thank you all who've made this possible. Carol, thank uh, the secretary. Um, it is just wonderful. Um, we are so excited here in Baltimore. One of six in the nation. That is a great thing. So thank you.